Part one of Sutra of the Past Falls of Astro Bodhisattva. Chapter one, Spiritual Penetrations in the Palace of the Drashtrimsha Heaven. Thus I have heard, at one time the Buddha was in the Drashtrimsha Heaven speaking Dharma for his mother. At that time, in ineffable, ineffable Buddhas and great Bodhisattvas, Mahasattvas, from infinite worlds in the ten directions, assembled to praise Shakyamuni Buddha's ability to manifest inconceivable great wisdom and powerful spiritual penetrations in the evil world of the five turbidities. They lauded his ability to regulate and subdue obstinate living beings so that these beings would come to know the Dharma of suffering and bliss. Each one sent his attendants to pay their respects to the world on our one. At that time, the dust come and smiled and emitted billions of great light clouds, such as the light cloud of great perfection, the light cloud of great compassion, the light cloud of great wisdom, the light cloud of great prashna, the light cloud of great samadhi, the light cloud of great auspiciousness, the light cloud of great blessings, the light cloud of great merit, the light cloud of great refuge, and the light cloud of great peace. After emitting all these indescribable light clouds, he also emitted many wonderful subtle sounds, such as the Dhamma Paramita sound, the Shila Paramita sound, Kshanti Paramita sound, Virya Paramita sound, Tana Paramita sound, and Prashna Paramita sound. There was the sound of compassion, the sound of joyous giving, the sound of liberation, the sound of no outflows, the sound of wisdom, the sound of great wisdom, the sound of the lion's roar, the sound of the great lion's roar, the sound of thunder clouds, and the sound of great thunder clouds. After such indescribable sounds had been emitted, countless millions of gods, dragons, ghosts, and spirits from the Saha and other worlds also gathered in the palace of the Trashtrimsha Heaven. They came from the heaven of the four kings, the Trashtrimsha Heaven, the Suyama Heaven, the Dushita Heaven, the Blissful Transformations Heaven, and the he Heaven of Comfort gained through others' transformations. They came from the heaven of the multitudes of Brahma, the heaven of the ministers of Brahma, the heaven of the great Brahma Lord, the heaven of lesser light, the heaven of limitless light, the heaven of light sound, the heaven of lesser purity, the heaven of limitless purity, and the heaven of universal purity. They came from the birth of blessings heaven, the love of blessings heaven, the abundant fruit heaven, the no thought heaven, the no affliction heaven, the no heat heaven, the good use heaven, the good manifestation heaven, the ultimate form heaven, the Maheshvara heaven, and so forth to the heaven of the station of neither thought nor non-thought. All those groups of gods, dragons, ghosts, and spirits came and gathered together. Moreover, sea spirits, river spirits, stream spirits, tree spirits, mountain spirits, earth spirits, broken marsh spirits, sprouting seedling spirits, day and night and space spirits, heaven spirits, food and drink spirits, grass and wood spirits, and other such spirits from the Saha and other worlds came and gathered together. In addition, all the great ghost kings from the Saha and other worlds came and gathered together. They were the Ghost King Evil Eyes, the Ghost King Blood Drinker, the Ghost King Essence and Energy Eater, the Ghost King Feeders and Egg Eater, the Ghost King Spreader of Sickness, the Ghost King Collector of Poisons, the Ghost King Kind Hearted, the Ghost King Blessings and Benefits, the Ghost King Great Regard and Respect and others. At that time, Shakyamuni Buddha said to the Dharma Prince, Manjushri Bodhisattva Mahasabha, as you regard these Buddhas, Bodhisattvas, gods, dragons, ghosts, and spirits from this world and other worlds, from this land and other lands, who are now gathered in the twelve streams of heaven, do you know how many of them there are? Manjushri said to the Buddha, World on our one, even if I were to measure and reckon with my spiritual powers for a thousand eons, I would not be able to know how many of them there are. The Buddha told Manjushri, Regarding them with my Buddha eye, I also cannot count them all. Those beings have been taken across, are being taken across, will be taken across, have been brought to accomplishment, are being brought to accomplishment, or will be brought to accomplishment by Ursula Bodhisattva throughout many eons. Manjushri said to the Buddha, World on our one, I have cultivated gurus for a long time and have certified to unobstructed wisdom. 
When I hear what the Buddha says, I immediately accept it with faith. But here is a small team in God's guidance and the rest of the A4 division and beings in the future who hear the Dasgama's true words will certainly follow our doubts. Even if they receive the teaching most respectfully, they will still be unable to avoid surrendering it. My only wish is that the world on the one will proclaim for everyone what Astro Bodhisattva Mahatsava practiced and what vows he made while on the level of planting causes that now enable him to accomplish such inconceivable deeds. The Buddha said to Manjushri, by way of analogy, suppose that each blade of grass and tree in a field of forest, each rice plant, hemp stalk, bamboo, reed, and each dust ball from mountain boulders in a 3,000, 3,000 world system were a Ganges river. Then suppose that each grain of sand in each of those Ganges rivers were a world, and that each dust mold in each of those worlds were an eon. Then suppose each dust mold accumulated in each of those eons was itself an eon. The time elapsed since Astro Bodhisattva was certified to the position of the tenth ground is a thousand times longer than that in the above analogy. Even longer was the time he dwelt on the levels of Yara and Pratika Buddha. Manjushri, the awesome spiritual vows of this Bodhisattva are inconceivable. If good men or women in the future hear this Bodhisattva's name, praise him, behold, or bow to him, call his name, make offerings to him, or if they draw a calf, cast, scalp, or paint images of him, such people will be reborn in the heaven of the thirty-three, one hundred times, and will never fall into the evil paths. Manjushri, ineffable, ineffable, years ago, during the time of a Buddha and divine spring complete in the 10,000 practices thus come one, Astro Bodhisattva Mahasava was the son of a great elder. The elder son, upon observing the Buddha's hawk marks and fine features, and how the thousand blessings adorned him, asked the Buddha what practices and vows had endowed him with such hawk marks. Hallmarks, lions bring complete in the ten thousand practices thus come one, then said to the elder son, If you wish to have a body like this, you must throughout long eons liberate all living beings who are undergoing suffering. Majushri that come and cause the elder son to make a vow, from now until the end of future time throughout uncountable eons, I will use expensive expedient means to help beings in the sixth class who are suffering for their offenses. Only when they have all been liberated will I myself become a Buddha. From the time he made the graveyard in the, in the presence of the Buddha until now, hundreds of millions of Nayutas of ineffable eons have passed, yet he is still a Bodhisattva. Another time inconceivable as Sankhya eons ago, there was a Buddha named Enlightenment Flower Samadhi self mastery King Das Kamon. The Buddha's lifespan was 400 billion Sankhya eons during his Dharma image age. There lived a Brahmin woman who was endowed with many blessings from previous lives and who was respected by everyone, whether she was walking, standing, sitting or lying down, God surrounded and protected her. Her mother, however, embraced her deviant faith and often started the triple jewel. The worthy daughter made use of many experiences in trying to con convince her mother to hold right views, but her mother never totally believed. Before long, the mother's life ended and her consciousness fell into the into the relentless hell. When her mother's life ended, the Brahmin woman, knowing that her mother had not believed in cause and effect while alive, feared that her karma would certainly pull her into the evil past. For that reason, she sold the family house and procured vast quantities of incense, flowers, and various other items, and performed a great offering in the Buddha's super and temple. In one of the temples, she saw an especially fine and majestic image of the Daskaman, enlightenment flower, Samadhi Self, Mastery King. As the Brahmin woman beheld the honors of one's countenance, she became doubly respectful and thought to herself, A Buddha is called a great and enlightened one, endowed with all wisdom. If this Buddha were in the world, I could ask him where my mother went after she died. He was certainly no. The Rana woman then wept for a long time as she gazed longingly upon the Daskam one. Suddenly a voice in the air said, O oh, weeping worthy woman, do not be so sorrowful. I shall now show you where your mother has gone. The Rana woman placed her palms together as she said in two space, Which divinity is comforting me in my grief? From the day I lost my mother, I have held her in memory day and night. But there is nowhere I can go to ask about the realm of her rebirth. The voice in the air spoke to the woman again. 
I am the one you behold and worship. The former enlightenment flower, Samadhi Sarva Master King, thus come one. Because I have seen you, your regard for your mother is double that of, that of ordinary be beings. I have come to show you where she is. The Brahma woman suddenly raised herself and lunged, lunged toward the voice she was hearing. She then fell, injuring all her limbs. Those around her supported and attended to her. And after a long time, she was revived. Then she addressed the air, saying, I hope the Buddha will be compassionate and quickly tell me into what realm my mother has been reborn. I am now near death myself. And like my flower, Samadhi Sarma speaking, thus come on, told the worthy woman, after you make your offerings, return home quickly. Sit upright and concentrate on my name. You will soon know where your mother has been reborn. The Brahma woman bowed to the Buddha and returned home. The memory of her mother sustained her as she, she sat upright, mm -hmm. recollecting enlightenment flowers, Somalis, her mystery king, thus come one. After doing so for a day and night, she suddenly saw her beside a season, whose water seized and bubbled. Many dreadful beasts with iron bodies were pursuing each one swiftly back and forth above the sea. She saw billions of men and women bobbing up and down in the sea, being fought over, seized and eaten by those beasts. She saw yakshas with different forms. Some had many hands, some many eyes, some many legs and some many heads, with their protruding fangs sharp as swords. They drove the offenders on towards those beasts. Furthermore, the beasts and yakshas seized the offenders and twisted their heads and feet together into shapes so horrible that no one would dare even look at them for long. During that time, the Brahmin woman was naturally without fear due to the power of recollecting the Buddha. A ghost king named Poisonous King bowed his head in greeting and said to the worthy woman, Welcome, O Bodhisattva, what conditions bring you here? The Brahmin woman asked the ghost king, What is this place? Poisonous replied, we are on the western side of the Great Iron Ring Mountain, and this is the first of the seas that encircle it. The worthy woman asked, I have heard that the hells are within the Iron Ring Ring. Is that actually so? Poisonous answered, Yes, the hells are here. The worthy woman asked, How have I now come to the hells? Poisonous answered, If it was an awesome spiritual stream that brought you here, then it was the power of karma. Those are the only two ways that anyone can come here. The worthy woman asked, Why is this water seething and bubbling, and why are there so many offenders and dreadful beasts? Poisonous replied, These are beings of Jambu Viva who did evil deeds. They have just died and passed through 49 days without any surviving relatives doing any meritorious deeds on their behalf to rescue them from their distress. Moreover, during their lives, they themselves didn't plan any good causes. Hence, their own karma calls for these hells. They must, of course, cross this sea first. Ten thousand years on us, east of this sea is, is another sea in which they will undergo twice as much suffering. Is that sea is yet another sea, where the suffering is doubled yet again. What the combined evil causes of the three karmas evoke are all called the Sea of Karma, this is that place. The worthy woman asked the, the ghost king Poisonous, what, where are the hells? Poisonous answered, within the three seas are hundreds of thousands of great hells, each one different. Eighteen of them, of those, are known as the great hells. Five hundred subsequent ones inflict luminous cruel sufferings. Following those are hundreds of thousands that inflict luminous further sufferings. The worthy woman again questioned the great ghost king. My mother died recently, and I do not know where her spirit has gone. The ghost king and asked the, the worthy woman, when the Bodhisattva's mother was alive, what did, did she do? The worthy woman replied, My mother had wrong views and ridiculed and slandered the triple jewel. Even if she occasionally believed, she would soon become disrespectful again. She died recently, and I still do not know where she was reborn. Poisonous asked, what was the Bodhisattva's mother's name and clan? The worthy woman replied, My parents were both Brahmins. My father's name was Shila Sudarshana. My mother's name was Yadili. Poisonous placed his palms together and implored the worthy woman, Please, worthy one, quickly return home. There is no need for you to grieve further. 
The Apanta Yuetili was born in the heavens three days ago. It is said that she received the benefit of offerings made of offerings made and blessings cultivated by her filial child, who for her mother's sake practiced giving at the stupas and temples of enlightenment flower Samadhi self masticating thus come one. Not only was the Bodhisattva's mother released from the hills, but all the other offenders who were in the relentless hell also received bliss and were reborn together with her. Having finished speaking, the ghost king put his palms together and withdrew. The Brahmin woman returned swiftly as if from a dream, understood what had happened, and then made a profound and far-reaching vow before the stupas and images of enlightenment flower, Samadhi self mastery king thus come one, saying, I vow that until the end of future eons, I will respond, respond to beings suffering for their offenses by using many expedient devices to bring about their liberation. The Buddha told Manjushri, the ghost king poisonous is the present bodhisattva foremost wealth. The Brahmin woman is now a store bodhisattva. <laughs> Ha ha ha, unsan modi soha.